Welcome to my shitty vlog. That's right, you read the uh, the uh, title right. I will be talking extensively about Tyron Woodley. <clears throat> but first, uh, let's uh, talk about the uh, featured prelim. Uh, Ricardo Lamas is the fucking truth. I don't know how the fucking judges thought Jason Knight was going to trash him. Uh, Jason Knight is a badass. Jason Knight is a fan favorite. Jason Knight is one of the slickest jiu-jitsu artists in all of MMA. Uh, but he was, what, number 13? And Ricardo Lamas was number 3. And there's a lot of ways that uh, Vegas lost money tonight. Uh, <laughs> that was one of them. Uh, next, we got to talk about Jimmy Manawa and Vulcan Uzdemir. I was skeptical of Vul Vulcan Uzdemir's high ranking. He's only fought twice. He did knock both of his opponents out. Um, I don't actually can't say if I remember correctly if he did knock uh, Ovin St. Prue out. I think Ovin St. Prue is a very highly overrated fighter um, that uh, beating him holds as much weight as it does because the light heavyweight rankings are thin. They're like thinner than the heavyweight rankings right now. They're super fucking thin. And that's a bad thing. Excuse me. It's really bad. And um, we're going to talk about some other bad things going on in the light heavyweight division after this. But Vulcan Uzdemir said in his post-fight interview, I don't know what's going on in my hands. These, these dynamite. No, no, no. Hydrogen bombs. Hydrogen bombs. Oh, my God. You have a world-ending plague in your fists. They say that uh, Conor McGregor has the touch of death in his left hand, and this is true. Vulcan Uzdemir's um, hand, oh my god. Oh my god. Just in punches from the clinch, just these. In the same way that he knocked out, um, shit, I can't remember his name, Misha Surkinov. Everyone was like, what the fuck? He just went whap, just like at this distance, just like a one-inch punch. And Misha Surkinov went pew. And I was going like, was that fixed? Because I don't know how the fuck that happened. I know the placement behind the ear is a good place to hit a guy, but just it didn't look that hard. So I was going like, is is Vulcan Uzdemir? Is like the fix in? Are they just trying to build this guy? Like, what the fuck? And then they threw him in against Jimmy Manawa, the poster boy, who has a habit of mark hunting people. He's murderous. He's got like, just, ugh. He, he, he kills people. It's ridiculous how powerful Jimmy Manawa is. And Vulcan Uzdemir destroyed him. You want to talk about the power Vulcan Uzdemir had? He really badly hurt uh, Jimmy Manawa with left hands. Uh, but what knocked Jimmy Manawa out is Jimmy Manawa tried to get the clinch back. And Vulcan Uzdemir shoved him so hard that Jimmy Manawa went, shoot, boom, his head bounced like a Super Bowl off the mat. And it's just, and we won't be seeing Manawa for a little while. He's got a concussion to recover from. He got fucked up. All right, Robbie Lawler versus Donald Cerrone. It wasn't as much of a barn burner as we thought it could have been, but it was probably fight of the night. Uh, it was a hell of a shootout. It was a really, really good fight. Uh, the crowd was ballistic for it, especially for Donald Cerrone. And oh, what a hero that man is. And they beat the fucking shit out of each other. Um Cerrone very nearly lost early in the in the first round, uh, very much like how he got, you know, just exposed by uh, Jorge Masvidal. But he did not go down and stay down. And uh, Robbie Lawler thought about, I guess, taking the second round off. And he got pieced the fuck up really bad by, uh, by Cerrone. Dude, Cerrone hit the shit out of him for the entire second round. And... Uh, you know, some people might have thought that uh, Woodley exposed that Lawler's chin isn't as good as it used to be. And Lawler has been in some horrific wars. Um, no. No, no, no. The first thing I'll say in defense of Tyron Woodley as is, is in this title is uh, that he has that kind of power that just put Lawler down. Uh, Lawler absorbed all the punishment. He came back and, and fought a razor-thin third round and won a split decision over Donald Cerrone. Uh, it was clear that Lawler won the first. It was clear that Cerrone won the second and the third could have gone either way. So although I would have liked to see Cerrone win that fight, I have nothing against Robbie Lawler and I have nothing against him winning that third round. It was a great performance. Cyborg versus Tanya Avenger. 
Hey, Tanya took her to the third round. Uh, she looked terrified to be in that cage. Uh, she took some really big shots, and Cyborg could have put her away in the first round. But Cyborg fought a very smart game plan. Cyborg is a very smart woman. Uh, she may not be the best looking. I don't have the balls to call her a dog. We know what happened to the last person who did. I like to think of her more as an urukai, uh, a female orc, if you will. That's a man, baby. No, no, it's the baddest woman on the planet. And uh, so there was never any doubt that Cyborg was going to destroy her. And uh, when I looked up who Tanya Evinger is, uh, I thought she had a chance. When I saw her come out and saw the fear in her eyes and the, um, forget UFC jitters, she had the UFC earthquakes, uh, the debut jitters. Nah, she had the debut uh, tectonic plate shifting. Um, she was terrified and it showed and she got embarrassed. And Cyborg is your champion. And who oh boy, I hope somebody with some uh, balls comes against her next. And it may literally have to be somebody with balls to beat her. <clears throat> I'm going to skip the Walter Waite title fight. Um, for those of you who quite justifiably hate Tyron Woodley, you may not want to listen to me talk about him. And I'm going to talk about his uh, fight with Maya at length. So we're going to save that for last. And for those of you who don't want to listen to me compliment Tyron Woodley, which I'm going to do unironically, uh, we're going to say that for last. John Jones versus DC. Kenny Florian thought DC was going to win. Chael Sonnen thought DC was going to win. Uh, several insiders thought DC was going to win. Not all of them. Not by a long shot. Uh, uh, Michael Bisbing thought DC was going to win. DC did not win. I don't think we're ever going to see DC fight again. I think he's going to retire just like he retired Johnson. Uh, Jones, yeah, he didn't look great against Ovin St. Pru. And I think Ovin St. Pru has been exposed as an overrated fighter. Um, he's still a phenomenal talent, but he has been getting the shit kicked out of him at length for a while now, and I don't understand how he's ranked. Oh yeah, there's nobody in the light heavyweight division, which is why I'm very sad to see Johnson go, and I'm ooh, I'm really sad to see uh, that I think DC's going to retire. I don't think he can recover from this. Um, so the first round, the first round, excuse me, I need, I need a drink of water here. I've been yelling at my TV a lot. DC won the first round. Barely. Uh, I don't know if DC won the second. He might have. DC was landing bombs on Jones, and Jones was demonstrating once again that he has one of the strongest granite chins in the business. He just smiled, even though he got his mouthpiece knocked out from like one of the first punches that Cormier threw, one of his devastating clinch uppercuts. Uh, Jones was eating it all. Jones was taking bad leg kicks and giving a lot of rough leg kicks. Uh, DC was paying for his upright stance a lot. He was getting bashed in the body like a motherfucker. Knees, um, teep kicks. Uh, there was like those kind of oblique foot stomps a lot. Uh, a lot of ton of leg kicks. But he was absorbing them, checking quite a few of them. And he was, it was looking like he had John Jones scared. And it was looking that way again in the third round. And in fact, DC was getting more aggressive. He was landing more and more punches, some of them really hard shots. And it didn't look like John Jones was in a lot of danger, but it looked like he was kind of running scared. Um, and then the head kick happened. John Jones had punished the fuck out of DC's body for a long, 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 long time. And he made it look like he was going to the body one more time. And John Jones, or excuse me, DC put both of his hands down. And he took a thunderous, just meteoric ICBM missile, just devastation head kick. The Rashad Evans versus Sean Salmon kind of head kick. Vicious. And DC has never been knocked out before because DC has got a head like a boulder. And has a chin even better than John's, I think. But it was not this day. Because though John Jones has lost some weight, he cut less for this fight. And uh, so did DC. And DC was determined not to get himself fucked over again. And was in probably the best shape of his life, the both of them. Yeah, bodybuilder uh, John Jones didn't show up to this. 
lean, mean, five-round machine John Jones showed up to this fight. And uh, let it be said that fucking, oh, that head kick. And DC was badly, badly hurt, but he refused to fall down, and Jones had to hit him a few more times until he fell over. Now, before I tell you what happened next, let it be said right now that John, uh, Big John McCarthy is not the best referee in the world anymore. A lot of people have criticized Mario Yamasaki for late stoppages. The whole, if he dies, he dies meme. You know, the Rocky Four line. Um, and fucking... Big John has been doing that a lot lately. Really late stoppages. More than anybody... You know, a lot of people consider Big John above, above reproach. That needs to stop. That really needs to stop. The man did literally uh, write the book on MMA. Uh, the rule book, that is. He literally wrote it. Um, the man is a legend. Uh, if he should have, like, f the UFC Hall of Famer 15 times over. Um, I honestly want him fired for what happened to DC next. Uh, Jones started landing vicious fucking stabbing elbows to uh, DC's head and knocked him out. And the fight continued. And I and when I mean out, I don't mean like grayed out. I don't mean like winked out. I mean, I thought DC was was going to go to the hospital. And he definitely is. He's definitely very badly hurt. And it is Big John's fault. Um, DC went limp. And Jones kept hitting him. And kept hitting him. And kept hitting him. And kept hitting him. And DC wasn't moving. And wasn't moving. And John Jones went wham! To DC's head about six or seven times after DC was limp and Big John was just looking at it, just letting it go. So much in the way that um, Mark Beltran really should have protected Ricardo Lamas, uh, should have protected Jason Knight from his own heart. Uh, that was bad, but Jason Knight was still standing. Um, and I, I criticize Mark Beltran for that. Uh, he should have waved it off in much the same way that um, Nunez was waved off of uh, Rousey while she was still standing. Uh, the fight should have been uh, waved off while Jason Knight was still standing. He took too many hits. He was out on his feet for like 30 seconds. The man is, like Ricardo Lamas called him, the hillbilly zombie. DC was limp and very badly hurt, and it took them minutes to rouse him. And he was fucked up so bad. And I, I I, will never forgive Big John McCarthy for that. That was some of the most shamefully bad officiating I've ever seen in my life. Fuck you, Big John McCarthy. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Go to fucking hell. Piece of fucking shit. Now, John Jones uh, gave a speech that almost moved me to tears. I mean, literally close afterwards. He said, I'm back. You know, I took my life back. If whoever thinks, you know, you've let your family down, your friends down, your teammates, your coworkers, your, your, everybody around you, let yourself down. And you can't look yourself in the mirror. It's never over. As long as you're willing to get up and try again, it's never over. He, he admitted that DC is a role model, an American hero, a great father and, 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 in a role model for us all in that he aspires to be like DC and he hugged him and he, he felt terrible because DC was crying. We found out that John Jones really has been keeping DC up at night all these years and that it was all blustered. And at the end of the day, just like the first time John Jones beat him, he cried, he cried and he cried and he cried. And I, I don't think we're ever going to see DC again. He's going to retire. I'm almost certain of it. And John Jones is the fucking truth. He hadn't lost a step. He was he was in winning form and he is the real deal. 23 and and 1. Fuck that bullshit disqualification lost to Mark Hamill for elbows that were not illegal. John Jones has never lost. John Jones has always been the greatest and I was a huge fan from the moment that he annihilated Shogun and 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 choked the fucking life out of Machida and beat the fucking piss out of fucking Rashad Evans and submitted uh, Vitor Belfort. He is a legend killer. He is the greatest fighter that has ever been and may ever will be. Bar none. John Jones is the greatest of all time. And no matter how much people like me 
resented him for fucking his whole life up. The steroid scandals, with the cocaine and the drug charges, the DUIs, the hit and, the hit and run on the pregnant lady. I was ready to see him humbled. But he's just the fucking truth. He's just a fucking monster. And after he he thanked DC and, and hyped his opponent and hyped himself and and, and gave this moving speech and, and showed that although he is a vicious and crude trash talker that maybe maybe he really has turned it around and maybe he really will will be something awesome. Um a lot, you know, a lot of people booed DC because he's like, you know, I, I'm not a fuck up. I'm a role model. And everyone's like, fuck you. Don't tell us who's a role model. You can't beat Jones. Well, those fans, first of all, are faggots. There's a lot of casuals who hate on, on DC and fuck every last one of you. I hope you die of cancer. Uh, but even though I wanted DC to win, I can say like a man that John Jones is the fucking truth. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, for all of you who have ever called me a racist, I'm about to take the race baitingest, least liked, uh, most whiny, uh, most unapologetically black and, and in your face about it, uh, UFC fighter, let alone champion in the business, the man who is booed everywhere he fucking goes, Tyron the Chosen One Woodley. I'm about to say a lot of nice shit about him. A lot. Because I don't think there's a smarter man in the business. I don't think there is a better winner in the business. He, he's not the best fighter. He's not the best striker or the best wrestler. He's not the most powerful. He's very good at all those things. And he is definitely not a fan's fighter. He put on the boringest fight in UFC history. I'm sure you are all mad as fuck at him right now. And I cannot blame a soul of you. No. He is the boringest fighter in UFC history. They set the record for the lowest amount of strikes thrown in a five-round fight ever. Uh, the chorus of boos was deafening throughout the last three rounds. <laughs> the crowd was exhausted after his fight. I was exhausted. I realized my face hurt really fucking bad when I went out to go have a cigarette in between that fight and the main event. And I realized it was because I was frowning, scowling at the screen like this the whole time. And it caused my cheeks and my jawbone and my brow to hurt and give me a headache. But Damian Maya is a killer. Damian Maya is a gigantic welterweight. He's huge. He's long. He's not terrible at striking. But there's one thing he's known for, and that's choking people the fuck out. And for the last, what is it, eight or nine people who have fought Damian Maya. It might even be more than that. I'm trying to remember how, what, how long his win streak was. I think it was eight. He took them down. And he choked them out. Tyron Woodley has the highest takedown defense in UFC history. And in this fight, I think it was somewhere between 23 and 25 takedowns were attempted. All of them, Damian Maya, attempting to take down Tyron Woodley. He failed. He failed badly. The very first time that he tried to take down Tyron Woodley in the opening seconds of round one, Tyron Woodley just gave him this little short uppercut because he expected the single leg, or the, actually the double leg. So his, he threw his, his face at the hip of Tyron Woodley, and Tyron Woodley just went whap, just a short one like that, and proceeded to probably break multiple bones in Damian Maya's face because Tyron Woodley is incredibly powerful. He just doesn't always show it, and you're about to find out why. And, and after that, there was takedown attempt after takedown attempt after takedown attempt. And as the fight continued with just Damian Maya stalking Woodley and Woodley just backing up and backing up and denying takedowns, uh, Joe Rogan uh, asked, do you think that any of the judges are going to give any of these rounds to Damian Maya just based on aggression and octagon control? Because look at this lack of action. There's no striking. There's no grappling going on here. Do you think that the raw fact that Damian Maya is engaging, he's going to win some rounds? And everybody said, I don't know. Well, Tyron Woodley, every time it looked like he had backed up and not thrown for too long, would stop, plant his feet, one, two, just touch him, and then back off again. And proceeded to uh, outstrike uh, Damian Maya for all but one of the rounds, I think. And I and a couple of the judges gave Damian Maya one round. No, no, no. 50-45 Woodley. Woodley won that whole fight and made Damian Maya his bitch. 
And it, you know, in round three, he actually I think he scored two knockdowns on Damian Maya. And in round three, he hit him with like a, a huge ass fucking punch, just wham. And Damian Maya just toppled over. And uh, Tyron Woodley could have just dived on him, probably threw some elbows, and knocked him out. And uh, what Tyron Woodley do? He stood there, didn't move an inch, pointed to Big John and said, "Get him up." Like if he can get up, get him up. Otherwise, I win. Fuck that. I'm not going down there. That's what we in the business like to call, ladies and gentlemen, high fight IQ. Okay? Tyron Woodley is very smart. To all you racists out there, this is no stereotypical dumb black man. This is a very smart black man. And I mean, I try not to give him too hard of a time for being a whiny race baiter, crying racism. He's from Ferguson, Missouri. I mean, like, look who he's around. Can you, and he still fights out of Missouri, so it's, what are you going to do? He fights out of St. Louis. And it's obnoxious. And he is an incredibly boring fighter. But I don't think there's ever been a smarter champion. Ever. The dude has the highest fight IQ ever. He might not be the smartest fighter. Like, in terms of whatever the fuck IQ you want, or whatever judge of intelligence you want. But he knew what to do to win. And his whole camp, all he did, literally all he did was... Let people try to take him down and then figure out every which way he could to not be clinched and not be taken down by Damian Maya. And Damian Maya tried fucking 15 ways to Sunday to take him down and failed. Excuse me, 24. Was it was a 24 or 23. And Tyron embarrassed him and made him, and made him his bitch. He made this killer, this... Dude, Damian Maya, what he does, you know, he's not a, he's not a mixed martial artist. He's still a jujitsu ace. He, he's he's a, a specialist from a bygone era. He takes you down. He chokes you out. And he's done that to everybody. There is no greater rear naked choke specialist in the history of the sport. Damian Maya is a strangler. He is a boa constrictor. He is the fucking empty vacuum of space when it comes to choking people. And he couldn't get within a million light years of choking Tyron Woodley. And Tyron Woodley made sure every round I just got to touch him enough, engage just enough to win on points so I'm leaving with my belt. And yeah, that's boring. And yeah, that's lame. And some people might even say it's cowardly, but any man who gets in the cage with Damian Maya is no coward. Let that be fucking known. And then if you say otherwise, you're a fucking liar. And he embarrassed him. And he followed his game plan to a T. And Joe Rogan asked Tyron Woodley, right, what do you think of these people booing? And, you know, Tyron Woodley's had a big head for a while. He definitely had a big head after he beat Lawler. And, you know, he says, I want to be known as the greatest of all time. And it seems like he's sort of changed. He's soured on the fans. And you can't really blame him because, you know, he did a bunch to piss them off. So they all talk constant shit to him. And there's probably no shortage of them fans on Twitter or whatever calling him a nigger. So I'm sure I'm sure that that's why he thinks we're all racist. Because I'm sure that what racists do exist uh, made sure Woodley knows that he's a piece of shit. And then they probably just add some racial epithets to that. Okay. Now, say what you will about him being boring or something. But no, he's a winner. He knew what it was going to take to leave with his belt. And he intended to leave with his belt. And he left with his fucking belt. He is a winner. Okay, he is the fucking champ. And he has beaten a lot of the best welterweights we've ever seen to get that belt. He's beaten the fucking shit out of Johnny Hendricks. He beat the fucking shit out of Lawler. He beat the fucking shit out of Thompson. He beat the fucking shit out of everybody. Okay? He's the man. And you can't take that away from him. He may be the hardest fighter to watch, but if you put away your filthy casual glasses, you put away your uh, slugfest fan glasses, and look at what a fucking technical genius he is, and how smart the camp that is around him is, and how they built him to win, not to please you, but to win. Well, he's one of the fucking most successful winners I've ever fucking seen, because he'll take any route to that and unlike john jones he's not gonna throw a million eye pokes unlike travis brown and the rest of the fucks there at jackson winkle john um he doesn't cheat he just does what it takes no matter what that looks like to you 
But, you know, much in the same way that Conor McGregor shut me up. John Jones shut me up. Not that I wasn't a huge fan of his before, and I'm perfectly fine with returning that to that now, that he's shown he still has it. He's still the baddest man that has ever lived. And he will fuck the life of Brock Lesnar because Brock Lesnar has a worse uh, stomach than Donald Cerrone does. Because like Donald Cerrone, he's had a lot of his guts taken out. And so uh, John Jones will kick the shit out of Brock Lesnar's stomach and Brock Lesnar will crumple over and die to elbows. Um, so that's what I think of that fucking fight. But, um, you know, say what you would. Say, as much as I tried to hate guys like John Jones and tried to hate guys like Conor McGregor, I am a fan of winners. So let it be said that I'm never going to be excited to buy a Tyron Woodley fight. And you better believe that every kind of card they put him at the top of is not going to sell very well. Because the guy's boring. He's really boring. But, again, in defense of Tyron Woodley, to close with this, he's a fucking winner. Alright? He's a smart, smart man. With a lot of power, a lot of wrestling acumen, and a genius team. And you will never be able to take that away from him, no matter how boring or race baity he gets. Thanks for watching, everybody. And goddamn... Overall, this card was the best I've ever fucking seen. This was worth every penny of that $60 price tag, baby. It was phenomenal. Okay, highly recommended. Goodbye, everybody.